So, higher maths, the unit one assessment, NAB one, outcome four, linear recurrence relations. Linear recurrence relation because it's a recurrence relation in that it only tells you how to work out the following term rather than any term further on by using the same pattern that just recurs each time. U1, U2, U3 for the names of the terms. And it's a linear recurrence relation because of the rule that's used to take this number and produce that answer is like the equation of a line. Multiply by something, add something. It'll be in the form of, to find the next term, you multiply the previous term by a number and add something, like the equation of a line. Now, in this question, the first mark is simply for writing that out. That means identifying what's the multiplying number and identifying what's the adding number. Now, this question is really about limits, though. A recurrence relation will reach a limit if this multiplying number is a proper fraction if it's less than one. You could say if its value lies between one and negative one, or I'll abbreviate to say if the actual numerical part of it is less than one. And if that's the case, what would happen would be, as you started to work out your succeeding terms, they would drop, because you're multiplying by a fraction, they would drop before you added, drop before you added. And eventually at some point or so, the amount it drops by will be the same as the amount you add, so it'll have levelled off to some limit. In other words, you'll have reached the limit if the number you're at, when you multiply by A and add on B, gives you the same number back out again. If the amount it drops by is the same as the amount you add. If multiplying by A, which of course is a fraction makes it smaller, is the same value as the amount B you're going to add back on again. It'll take you back where you started. So you could write it in this way. You'll have reached the limit, that certain number, if when you multiply by A and then add B, you get that number back out again, and then you can just solve that equation to find the limit. There's two marks there. First mark's for realising that this is what happens at the limit. The second mark would be for actually evaluating what that limit is. And the third part of the question is just making a decision based on that limit. Now, an alternative to just using that in its raw form, and there's two marks there, one for writing it down in its raw form, but with numbers in, and one for evaluating it. And then the final mark was for a decision, a conclusion. A conclusion based on numerical evidence, not just a yes or no. An alternative to that would be to write down the limit formula, which is just a rearrangement of that. Take that AL across, factorise out the L, so there's one there, minus A, and then take that across and divide, and you've got that limit formula you can use instead. Again, with numbers put in for the first mark, and then evaluated for the second mark, and then the conclusion. So, to the question. So what was there in this question then? Part A, for one mark, write down the recurrence relation. Well, search out the numbers and the information. There's a two-fifths and there's a two-thousand. The two-fifths is related to a multiplying number and the two-thousand is an amount that's been added. But watch what you're doing with this two-fifths. You have to think, what, in order to get this recurrence relation, what am I going to multiply UN by to find the resulting amount. Now, it's not two-fifths, it's two-fifths that's disappearing. And if you take two-fifths off of something, it means you're left with three-fifths. So the multiplying number is actually three-fifths. The following day, there'd only be three-fifths of the beetles left. Except another 2,000 comes swarming in. So that would be the mark for part A. Now, in part B, it says, find the limit of this sequence as n tends to infinity. Well, you could either write down the formula in the raw form or the collected form. That form would be L equals, well, in the raw form it simply means you've reached your limit if you multiply by three-fifths and add 2,000 and you still get the same number out. If you've got three-fifths of L plus 2,000 and you work it out and it still gives you L, that's your limit. So you could either put that down that would be a mark. 
or you could put the formula down, L equals B over 1 minus A, but that doesn't get any marks. Not until you put the numbers in, because you need to know what they actually stand for. B was the adding number, and A was the multiplying number, 3 fifths. That would get you a mark as an alternative to that one. And then it's just a case of evaluate it. Now here, there's no specific mark for making the statement which you usually would in an exam that a limit exists because this multiplying number happens to be a proper fraction. Normally you'd be writing down, since the three-fifths is a proper fraction, either the modulus less than one or it lies between negative one and one, since it's a proper fraction, that means a limit, which we're calling L, exists as n tends to infinity. Normally in an exam you'd have to put that down, but here there's no specific mark for that in the marking scheme. It's simply putting down the limit formula, or limit condition rather, or formula, and then the next mark's just for evaluating it. So either way around, whichever way you want to work it, take that across, you'll have two-fifths of L is 2,000. Take the five across and multiply, and the two across and divide. And you'll have 1,000, you'll have 5,000. That's the third mark. And then the final mark is for making a conclusion, according to the criteria here. It says, if the beat number of beetles exceeds 5,500, the crop will be reduced. And it says, will the beetles, number of beetles, reduce the crop? Well, the answer is no. No. The crop will not be reduced, and there's no way around this. There's just lots of writing. No, the crop will not be reduced. That's worth no marks, even though it's correct unless it's justified numerically, and you can't just say, oh look, there's the numbers up here, you have to make a statement. Why? Will not be reduced as, and you could just put it tersely as, 5,000 is less than the 5,500, or in a bigger sentence, that would get you the mark, that would be sufficient, or you could say, will not be reduced as, <clears throat> there are 5,000 beetles, which is less than the 5,500 necessary to reduce the crop. But that would do the statement, yes or no, and a numerical justification of it. Those are the four marks then.